another fascinating depot story for you coming off the uh the old flashlight conversation it that technology i guess it was invented probably like 20 years ago now so i'm 41 yeah about 20 years ago now and um by the way driving by the depot the other day and i it's still there it's under a different name um i didn't really want to avert my eyes from the road because i'm still ashamed and embarrassed even though maria has no idea what that building is i still like had my sunglasses on and just side of the eye looking over to try to see if it's still open and i did see like some sort of like showgirl pose on a sign so i'm like yeah it's still a smut shop but i remember uh me and your brother going in there probably like 20 years ago and uh they had this uh they had this case and then the case was like the uh the pelvis area of a lady and they, they had like it in plexiglass and they had a hole cut in the plexiglass so you could feel the lifelike uh, texture uh, of the brand new latex product that they had come up with. And the thing is, is we all, of course, stuck our fingers in once, yeah, yeah. but it was so like black with like axle grease. It was just this dirty, dirty fake vagina that every like human being in Harford and Cecil County had all taken a turn like sloppy one hundredths, just <laughs> fingering up that thing. And yeah, that just reminds me of what the fleshlight technology is. And uh, I've never touched a fleshlight, but I do have an idea. And uh, it's not like the real thing, I'm sure, but probably pretty close. See, what I'm picturing is, is, is that you guys go down and you, you go to the depot, you all do this, you all get your finger dirty. Mm -hmm. And then you hit up the nearest 7-Eleven or Wawa and pick up like some... Uh, some gummy bears or something. Something you gotta. <laughs> we guys want to do next. Uh, yeah, this is definitely the era before Purell and hand sanitizers and all that. So yeah, we definitely weren't uh, getting all cleaned up. By the way, I've realized how much hand sanitizer I've used over the last year, and how many hypochondriac germ freaks are there going to be moving out of this pandemic? Oh, tons. I was actually, there was an article I was reading. I don't know what it was on, but it was about like that is most likely going to be a serious like psychological problem for a decent amount of people is getting back to normal, like normal, not wearing masks all the time, even when you don't have to like, yeah, it's going to be a problem. I could see it. Well, I also think that, uh, you know, seasonal flu rates have been down at an all time low. Um, well, that's because COVID's fake, Wesley. I understand. Yes, COVID. Okay. Is, um, this is a, this is a way to control <laughs> control the uh, worker bees of of the country. But, um, I mean, the, the proof's in the pudding. I'm not saying that we need to be masked up all the time, but uh, may, may, maybe, 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 just maybe, we uh, we, we put a put up a halt on some of the seasonal flus going forward with some better better hand uh, hand washing techniques more uh more sanitation more flashlights just just less just less, spitballing here but less adolescence fingering flashlight that, uh you know, just that, that's probably that's probably a good idea mm -hmm. uh, i was a young adult <laughs> 19 sorry I was say but just spitballing here but i feel like a lot of uh a lot of other cultures who are pretty successful at not killing a lot of people accidentally with the flu have been wearing masks for a while but our American egos say, fuck those masks. You getting the flu. I'm getting the flu. We're all fucking coming to work because that's how America does it. God damn it. Take it yeah, off. It's just, you're talking about like the Japanese. Yo, I'm talking about like every Asian country. I'm not, not just the Japanese. <laughs> like literally every Asian country that isn't, I don't know, fighting itself at currently at the moment. So like, Jap or China's yeah. just good at hiding the bodies, and Japan's the yeah, only yeah. one. You, yeah, Japan's the only one well, no, that's the, like the Koreans are on the the South Koreans are on the up and up. The, they we know about the noisy neighbor. It's not the South Koreans. <laughs> like yeah, and fucking Samsung, they got that Samsung money. That's how South Korea is doing it. Yeah, and they're like the Hyundai. size of New Jersey. Fuck and them. Hyundai and Hyundai. Well, and Genesis now. And Genesis sees right. That's and Genesis yeah. is still making good music. I think they're still pumping out hits. Go Collins. Yeah. yeah. So he, he's South Korean. You know, I think he's definitely something. He's good <laughs> on his mother's side, probably. Definitely something. 
Speaking, what do you speaking, think he got them fancy? What do you think he got them fancy electric drums in the eighties? Uh, one, <laughs> one from over here, buddy. <laughs> yeah, Sony. <laughs> hmm. Good stuff. Speaking of stealing our rights and stealing our freedoms, you guys hear that uh, Biden is going to try to um, nix menthols? Yeah, I did hear yeah. that. All right, Murr, let us have it. Can we? Please. No, I want it. Okay. 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 Can we please be in control of our fucking bodies? Can we do that? Is that the the last bastion of borders should be inside our fucking skin. If I want to fucking inhale some fucking fiberglass into my lungs and tear it up like a bunch of miniature fish hooks, I have the God given American right to do so in a strip club with a fucking Newport at all. They have taken... I was, we were texting back and forth about this earlier, and I was telling you, like, my jewel, okay, my jewel pods apparently are now under the jurisdiction of some new bullshit tax code where there's, like, some, like, I don't know, like, three and a half dollar tax per pack, and because my little jewel pods come in a four pack, they tax it fucking, like, ten dollars a fucking four pack now, ten dollars, so whatever that is, what's ten divided by four, I don't know because I'm American and I don't need to fucking know. It's a fraction. <laughs> we we have, don't do we those. We have those Asian countries for math. Long, right. Long Fractions. Because <laughs> when it comes to money, it's not a fraction. It's a decimal and decimals metric. And I don't abide by those fucking rules. So either way, they're charging me fucking per little tiny little pod. They're jacking up the prices. They wanted me to quit smoking cigarettes. So I moved on to the, my fucking vape trail. Okay. And now their price in my vape trail as much as I was paying for my cigarettes. I might as well start smoking again. And now what are they going to do with the menthol cigarettes, Wes? Are they going to ban them completely? Is that what his deal is? Uh, you know, I, I don't know the insides and outs. All I saw was that he, he, he's, he's planning on banning menthols. Now, I, does that mean the crushes? The, the, you know, you have the ones that start out as non menthol and you can push a little button in the middle and, and make a menthol? Uh, does it mean all menthols together? I don't know. Uh, you know, and I don't need to read to be informed. Okay. I just read the titles and a couple little clips off of Google and I'm there. I, I was going to say, cause like everything that I have just Googled and this is just cursory. I don't, I haven't gone through them, uh, but it says nothing about my man Biden. It just says the FDA. So are we just, bl we're blaming it on him, right though? I'm cool. Well, I'm just making sure. I was just making sure. I just didn't know if Biden was like, fuck it. Let's get rid of menthol like verbally. Um, or if like we're just blaming shit on him at the moment. Okay, let, let, let me just say this, Alan. If we're going to fucking abide, abide by the same rules as the previous yeah. administration, then yeah. yes, Biden is getting rid of yeah. mental health. No, that's perfectly fine. I was just asking. I was just clarifying. I just didn't know if he had said it. Like we're saying Biden is, is banning menthol. So I just wanted to make sure he said, like when we say Trump said you should inject bleach, or cleaning solutions or cleansers or however the fuck he worded it. See, he said that, not his administration. Biden's administration's handling this menthol thing. Totally his fault. I'm cool with it because when I smoke a cigarette, I kind of do like a menthol. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, fuck him. I just wanted to be clear on who who we're, who we need to be blaming and who's going to take be the face of said blame. Yeah. They do Biden, I'm they okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. But it's okay so it's been proven time and time again that no matter how much you ban things okay uh menthols guns drugs booze prostitution things of that nature it doesn't matter humans are gonna listen you ban menthols you you guys know sorry you guys know what i think is gonna happen I know what's going to happen, but I want to hear your take. People are going to make menthol cigarettes in their fucking basements and in, in, in oh. weird places and in, in back country it up fucking uh, uh, prohibition style. And I was going to say, I wonder. And I that, wonder that, that, that's how like, it's going to happen. Can you just like grow some tobacco, right? Dry it out through the whole process mm -hmm. and then like toss in some mint. And then just roll it up into a cigarette. Would that work? Is that a menthol cigarette? I mean, like you can roll. No, through and I don't think that's. <laughs> well, no, I know that. I'm just. Yeah. I'm just I, at like, I, are we saying that it's not truly a menthol unless you get that fiberglass burn? Because that's how I feel. Perhaps. 
But I, do you think that, okay, my point is, is that there's someone out there who has the recipe or the know-how or, or you know, the, yeah, the, Philip Morris. the ingredient list to make these in their fucking home. <laughs> Joe that, Camel. going to happen. It's just that they're going to, it's going to, no. people are going to produce these illegally and sell them illegally. I mean, I guess, I mean, you're going to have some redneck tech if that's the case. Like, I, I don't, I don't mm-hmm. know. I, that's okay. This is one. I find myself to be, all right. I don't know. I think of myself as a fairly knowledgeable person and a lot of dumb bullshit information. I have no idea what makes a cigarette menthol. You might be, you might be right. They'll just get them from, they'll just get them from fucking Russia or China or Mexico or just some other fucking like second, third world country. And they'll just import them in here and they'll just sell them on the streets for 500% profit. But here's what I think will happen if they try to ban the menthol cigarette. If you want to see an insurrection in this country, if you want to see poor white trash and poor minorities come together for a united cause, take away their menthol cigarettes. You see what happens on Capitol Hill when they can't get their fiberglass nicotine fix. You know, burn some shit to the ground. Yeah. Talk like, about a CVS on fire. I mean, mm. you're totally not wrong because many a night in Baltimore City, I have been out uh, enjoying some libations, and I stepped outside to enjoy a smoke, and one of our local uh, addict uh, compatriots here in our city has stumbled up to me and said, hey, man, can I get a, can I get a fug? It's Baltimore. Don't forget. So I say... <laughs> Yeah, sure you can, sir. Here's one of my Marlboro 27s. It is non-mentholated. And he says, get the fuck out of here. I need a new port. So there could be some fucking serious rioting going on. I believe that. Yeah, I I agree. And you know what amazes me is that people who are addicted to uh, said drug, um, they just can't tell the difference between you know, menthol and non-menthol, even when you're at that stage or you're that drunk or that, you know, what have you, and you want yourself a fix, it doesn't matter. Got to, got to get that menthol. Got to get that fucking fiberglass. Menthols, I think past the age of like, I don't know, 25. I don't know. They're a little weird in my opinion. I got off the menthols after, like, I was like, oh God, I'm fucking, I'm fucking 19 and I can't like run anymore because I'm smoking full, <laughs> full men, not even menthol lights. I'm smoking full menthols. This is a fucking terrible idea. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I feel like let, let the, the herd thin itself out. Menthols, you know, are just a treat. At least we're not like, we're not doing the, the camel fucking like Mandarin vanilla Turkish gold. Like we used to do where like kids were like, yeah, let's smoke those. Cause that's what I did. Uh, and yeah, I think fuck it, let let it happen. Biden's fucking it all up. On, on a serious note, okay, wasn't like the first re like the thing that really kicked off all this police brutality stuff? Wasn't it because somebody was selling single cigarettes on the street in New York City? Yeah, he did. He did get chucked got, out. Yeah, selling, yeah, single because cigarettes. the cigarettes in New York. So because Lucy. that's New York was the first. City. Yeah, Lucy's bro. The the. Uh, that New York City was the first place to get cigarettes up to like ten dollars yeah. a pack, so people couldn't afford them. Yeah. So homeboys out there selling them for like I don't know, like fifty cents a smoke, because that's an affordable price for a cigarette. Yeah. And then he gets choked out and dies on the uh, streets that we call the fucking uh, riots across the country. So maybe a bad idea to price Probably. people out of their fucking addiction. <laughs> Fun fact, guys. Uh, yeah. Did you know that they used to market fucking menthols as throat comfort between your other cigarettes and your cigars? Wow. <clears throat> Specifically cools. In between the others, rest your throat with cools. Let me see if I get this straight. Uh, so, yeah. Smoking some marble reds or some Pall Malls or some Winston's and then maybe like a, uh, a cigar or two. If you really just want to th- yep. relax your throat yep. and, and everything, you just pop in yep. a menthol. Interesting. Yeah. Our day on the golf course, fucking suck back like two or three Cohibas and get home. What do you do? You pour yourself a fucking bourbon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Really, really soothe the vocal cords and toss back a cool. <laughs> I'll get you right. Like how Mer's gone. I will say. <laughs> it'll, have your, it'll have your jaw falling off by 50. <laughs> Man, the thing with menthols. 
Well, the thing with menthol cigarettes is okay. Like, I, ice cream, ice cream today. I ever had. Okay, still delightful, still delicious. That's what keeps me going. Okay. I remember the first menthol cigarette I ever had tasted like I was inhaling like a like an after dinner mint in vapor form, and I was like, oh my god, now I know why they do it. S yeah. Menthol cigarettes are the only thing that get that taste worse the more you have them. Yeah. It's it's an amazing product, and I I tip my cap to the good folks at uh, R.J. Reynolds and Philip Morris. Yeah, what do you think they were thinking? Like what uh, the origin of this? Like, hey, we got these tobacco leaves. How can we make it minty? How can we make it uh, between between tobacco? As you as you described, Alan, is that is that the brainchild behind this? Like, hey, Lord, we need to. That's no, no, that's well. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm using my very fucking accurate resource, uh, Wikipedia. Um, you know, don't forget to use that on your uh, academic papers, kids out there. Um, Origins in history: Menthol cigarettes first developed by Lloyd Spud Hughes in Mingo Junction, Ohio. Uh, so yeah, Spud Menthol cooled cigarettes were the first brand, uh, and then some other company made Cool in 1933. So Cools were around. And then R.J. Reynolds was like, well, we'll just make Salem's. Hmm. Uh, yep, there you go. And then some other fucking company I've never heard of made Newports. And Philip Morris made something called Alpine until they probably bought Newports, is my, my assumption. Because uh, nobody knows what the fuck Alpines are. Hmm. I've seen Alpines. A uh, word? <laughs> I've yeah. never even heard of it. Those are those little after dinner mints, you know, the little uh, uh, one by one and a half. That's true, too. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, we had a fraternity brother who used to smoke like anything. He would just walk in and be like, whatever the fucking cheapest menthol cigarette is. And my man would come back in with fucking like USA Golds uh, and shit. <laughs> Bro, those were tough smokes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a guy smoking, a uh, guy I worked with at a gas station smoked, uh, uh, they, they were Mavericks. And I remember looking at the side of them. And there are class B cigarettes. I'd never seen a class B cigarette before. I'm like, no. what the fuck is that? He's like, basically, when they get done, like packing the class A's, they sweep up the floor and whatever's left, that goes into the class B cigarette. Yeah. So he used to do this. He used to go, uh, this is one of our brothers, Wes. Uh, he used to go, I don't know if they were ended up being class B, but I would assume if Ma all Mavericks are probably class B's, there's probably not a, like an upper echelon Maverick. Um, and yeah, he would come back with like cartons of them. I think like him and his dad would go like to Virginia or some shit. He'd just come back with cartons of them and fucking just suck down Mavericks like it was going out of style. And they were like, those were, weren't even the cigarettes we used for like brothers and like for, for like pledging yeah, yeah. purposes. Cause yeah, yeah, we would use shit cigarettes for that. This was just his cigarette. This was his cigarette for the, for the day. That's what he was doing. <laughs> his casual. Smoking those. It's <laughs> yeah, pretty okay. gross. Oh yeah. Yeah, because I remember, like, I would come, I'd be like, "Yo, hey, you got a, you, uh, you got a cigarette, man? I'm, I'm out." And he'd be like, "Yeah, here, here's, hand me a fucking Maverick Menthol." And I'm like, "No, nah, I'm good, bro. I'm, <laughs> good. I'm, gonna, sit I'm gonna sit this one out." <laughs> you know what? You made me rethink it. Thank don't you. Need, don't need that. Don't need that. Well, good luck to uh, President Biden need... in 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 his endeavors on uh, banning menthol cigarettes. I think that's fucking idiotic. And Murray, you you hit the nail on the head. I want to put it in my Could body. I mean, what, well, what, where do you, like, how do you come to terms with, okay, all right, regular cigarettes are good, menthols are bad. I mean, they're all, obviously menthols are worse, but is this just his, his, yeah, his, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my conservative hat on. What are you liberals doing? Huh? We're buying all these cigarettes? <laughs> all right. I'll tell you exactly what it is, because I don't like getting too deep on this show, but uh, the vast majority of minorities smoke menthol cigarettes and- there is an inordinate amount of black Americans who smoke menthols. And so it's, it's, it's killing them at a more rapid rate than it is white folk. So in their, yeah. in their insane uh, notion of save the minorities, because they apparently, they don't have and i think that's i told stupid fucking yeah, thing i mean that's pretty much what this is so with these actions the fda kind of like most kids at least that i know fucking got into smoking smoking menthols um because 
tugging on a fucking marble red at like 16, you, you might put you off of it. Uh, increase the chances of smoking cessation among current smokers and address health disparities experienced by communities of color, low income populations and LGBTQ individuals, all of whom are far more likely to use these tobacco products, apparently. What? FDA. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, you you were right, though. Fucking. Yeah, I know, you know but I just don't see how color. I don't separate group from you know the ethnicity that you are but anyway no well yeah i guess for a health demographic but yeah i don't know roll on the heels of that uh menthol conversation welcome to the middle class holes fox man alan and Murr. uh so we've talked about uh poop and shit and turds a lot here on this uh in this podcast and rightfully so. No. <laughs> no way. Actually, we had a when? Pretty, when? <laughs> we had a pretty thorough conversation previously about uh, about toilet paper. So um, here in uh, Lodi Township, Michigan, a 250 foot long wall of poop divides two properties in Lodi Township. Uh, it's a smelly fence that Wayne Lambarth. Yeah, that, like, if I'm going to think of a, a poop sculptor of a fence, Wayne Lambarth might be up there. Uh, says his it's former a neighbor uh, built after a dispute. Uh, normally they spread it in the field, but they decided to make a fence out of it, Lambert said. Uh, Lambert's grandfather developed the farm 100 years ago, but the property was divided and there's been a dispute ever since, or actually uh, within the last year, sorry. Um, so uh, so Jaden Schwartzel, who's the other person in the dispute, said, uh, it's just a shit pile over there. <laughs> so, uh, Lamberth has tenants living in the house who were forced to deal with the smelling uh, cow poop ball every day. Uh, it's like we can't. Uh, it's it's like you can't leave the window open. Said the whole the whole upstairs will smell like it. I was it, so how, okay. Hold on. How do you say this first name? C O Y N E. Coin. C O Y N E. Yeah. Coin. 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 Cohen. Cohen. Y N E. Coin. I had a I had a teacher in high school whose last name was Coin, okay. and it was spelled that way. So I'm going with Coin. Coin Gatto. So you can't leave the window open. Uh, it'll make the whole upstairs stink. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, 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 there's so there's a dispute over land. All right, and one property owner builds a 250 foot wall of dung. I mean, how do you handle that? Blow it up. <laughs> Uh, probably, probably buy a lot of candles around the house. Uh, <laughs> probably not, probably not opening the windows a whole bunch. I don't know. That's, that's probably it. Other than that, it's probably not really that big of an inconvenience other than the smell. Well, I just want to know what coin was trying to accomplish because I can't imagine that the dispute is like more than a 10 foot, right? Like you can't fuck up a property line that much. So how far off was this property line? And as far as it's smelling like shit, I have a feeling if your house butts up to a farm, even if that's a 10-foot disparity, your house is still going to smell like shit. So maybe don't piss off your farmer neighbor because farmer neighbor is the type to build a 250-foot fucking long pile of shit separating yeah. your property. I was going to say, whatever dispute you had, uh, regardless of how deep rooted it is, how many generations it dials back into your family, uh, how stubborn you and your would be spouse are about this property line. If a 250 foot long wall pile of shit is built in order, it, just as like a retaliation fire, I might be like, you know what? You win. You've done more than I would ever be willing to do. <laughs> Can we compromise on something? 60 percent yours what, whatever the negotiating terms were i'm will, i'm willing to go back to the table and take less yeah this is one of my favorite like revenge plots that i've seen dude farmers don't fuck around man and they got a lot of time and creativity on their hand imagine how long it takes to plow a field or to you know go through and get some crops out of the ground and all day long they're just white knuckling that steering wheel, that tractor. Is this motherfucker? I'm. What am I gonna fucking do? Oh, I gotta get all that shit tomorrow. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna build a fucking mall shit. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so, y'all, 
<laughs> chow meow. <laughs> chow chow. That's that's tough, man. I don't know what I would do. I'd probably lose my mind and start actually shitting on the pile of shit and just see if my neighbor got pissed off about it. Right. I think that's probably that would probably that would probably be my move. Like he would he would think it was funny and then I'd be like, oh, oh, yeah, I got something for you guys. You're going to watch me take every fucking deuce that I have to take right here on top of this thing. Hey, you don't poop on my poop. <laughs> it's just and it has nothing to do with the poop. It's just the inconvenience of watching me take shits out your window. Uh -huh. What? OK, what could. OK, what is the possible retaliation? Yeah, it's tough, man. That's what I'm saying. You've got to go somewhere. You got to go somewhere fucking crazy with it. I don't know. Unless like, you can like somehow because you can't you can't build a bigger wall of shit. Right. <laughs> That's stupid. Could you somehow direct yeah. uh small explosives to blow poop back onto his property? You know, like, like well, I was gonna say you could wait, wait till wait. it dries out a little bit, and then I'm. I was gonna say you could wait till it dries out a little bit, and then I think Bear Grylls has taught us that dung is uh pretty flammable. Oh, so we just light like a a fucking massive poop fire, and then he probably gets in trouble. Like you got to start it pretty pretty slickly, but he probably gets in trouble for burning two hundred and fifty pounds of shit or whatever the fuck you said it was. So. That's that's probably that's, that's probably the ticket. You just gotta like, think about it for a little. Blackmail bit. him. Well, not blackmail. Blackmail applies as uh, Basically, clue your way into saying that he was the arsonist. Yeah. Okay. Just look at this guy. He's yeah. fucking just burning shit. Yeah. This is this is outrageous. It was next to my property line too, motherfucker. It was, it was Coin Gatto in the field with the two hundred fifty pound pound pile 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 of shit. It's him. He's he's the guy. Yeah. Right. He definitely how, get a citation for that. That's how they that's talk in Michigan, just like that. When you come with a name like Coin oh. Gatto, the hell, fucking Jack Wagons. Right? What's a stupid name? Uh, speaking of uh, odd legal cases, okay, so Madison, Wisconsin, we're sticking to like a nice fine uh, pocket of the United States here, moving from Michigan to Wisconsin. Neighbors, briefly. Oh, yeah. Uh, so a Juneau County, not to be confused with uh, our good folks in Juneau, Alaska. I, has anyone done any follow up research of um, what's her face who was uh, banging out the uh, the mayor of uh, Anchorage? Remember that? Oh, no, we should have. <laughs> I did see an interesting Alaska story, though, if you want me to bring it up, but we could talk about it later. OK, so a Juneau woman filed a federal lawsuit Sunday against a company that creates Bagel Bites pizza snacks, alleging that the alleging that the packaging of the product devices uh, deceives customers because it does not have real mozzarella or tomato sauce. Uh, according to the lawsuit filed in federal court, uh, Caitlin Huber argues that packaging uh, of Kraft Heinz food companies uh, pizza bagel snacks is misleading. Uh, she says she alleges that the front label's emphasis on mozzarella cheese and real dairy is false because the product does not contain real mozzarella cheese. She, this is a good one. This is one of my favorite quotes here. She also argues that reasonable Wisconsin consumers would accept a product with tomato sauce that contains only tomato ingredients and seasoning, not thickeners. Um, I mean, it goes on and on. Real dairy, blah, 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 blah. Jesus Christ. Come on, woman. A, a reasonable Wisconsiner. A reasonable anybody should understand that fucking bagel bites aren't going to. It's Look at the back of that. You don't know what you're putting in your fucking. I don't know what's in menthol cigarettes. You don't know what's in your fucking bagel bites. Yeah. yeah. I champion this woman's cause. A hundred percent. All right. All right. Because, okay, the commercial does kind of lead you to believe, like, they actually show, like, a real pizza, and then there's, like, a computer animation where the pizza folds itself up into some sort of, like, wonton-esque style pocket, and they're like, it, it, it does, it, it's garbage. It's garbage food that's cheap that you only give to your kids because they don't know any better and so to to try to pimp this thing out as a pizza product 
I mean, I feel like she's failing by saying, like, no true Wisconsinite would accept this as real cheese. That's where she's going wrong. But in essence, the, the underlying tone of her lawsuit, I agree with, is that this is not a pizza product. This is not real food. Fuck you. And where's our where's my where's my lawsuit money? How, how is it not a pizza product? I don't understand. Please explain to me. I mean, I get that it's on a bagel and I'm not. I'm just let's toss that to the side. What else about it is not pizza? Wait, hold on. Wait, what's the product again? Is it bagel bites or um the little like uh like egg roll looking thing? Oh, you're talking about the Totino's pizza rolls? That's different. That's not food. Bagel bites <laughs> snacks <laughs> by the fat. Oh yeah, no, fuck them too. <laughs> it's a fuck them too. But I don't. I listen. Okay, I have two questions. One, um, isn't every anything null and void because you can turn the box over and read the ingredients? Okay, that's my first question. My second question is, two, how do you have the right to file a lawsuit against a product like this simply as a consumer who's like disgruntled about ingredients or would be ingredients? Because again, well, you can turn the box over and read the fucking ingredients. Like, well, it's misleading. The picture shows this mozzarella that's spreading apart when they point a bagel bite you bark. Blah, blah, blah. My kids and my snot and my Kyles and my fucking Gregs get, don't get their nutrients and vitamins because we don't feed them properly. Your that's Bradens and your, and your yeah. Braylons. Yeah, and your Braylons yeah. and Braylons. And they, 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 I, <laughs> I feed them four times a day. Okay, they promote this as a pizza product. They basically are saying this is pizza on a bagel. On a bagel. But we all know what the ingredients for pizza are. It's mozzarella cheese. It's a, it's a pizza sauce. And basically what this lady's saying is, I have now read the ingredients on the back of the box. It is neither pizza sauce nor is it mozzarella cheese. And it's barely a fucking bagel. So you've been telling me for years that I've been buying this product that's supposed to be one thing. It's advertised as one thing, but in reality, it's not. And if you do read the ingredients on the back of a box, you're reading like the back of a shampoo bottle. It's like sodium sulfate chloride with tomato extract. I don't know what that means. I'm not a fucking scientist. I'm a consumer. Your commercial's supposed to tell me what I'm eating. And if your commercial's lying to me, then fuck you. Oh, I champion oh. this lawsuit. Gotcha. So you're the, the commercial, I don't, I don't, this commercial supposed to spell out the ingredients list. You as a consumer aren't supposed to turn the box over and read the ingredients and understand what you're putting in your body. Gotcha. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, to like, an extent, but look, not no. I <clears throat> fuck you, Wes. I I'm, a fucking, my argument. I'm, fuck a real, I'm a railroad this bitch's argument right now. I'm looking at the bagel bites box. All right. Yeah. Uh nowhere on this bitch. Does it does it advertise that the cheese is mozzarella of any kind? All right. It just says bagel bites, pizza snacks. I'm looking at the cheese, sausage and pepperoni. That's the three option. Yep. I said cheese. I didn't say okay. what kind of cheese. All Hold right. on. You said pizza snack, right? Yeah. Pizza snacks. OK. Pizza snack. Look up the ingredients for pizza. I don't because need as to. Soon it's as... tomato no, no, sauce no, 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 no. and cheese and bread. Wait. Wait. As How? soon as you say. Well, hold on. As soon as you say pizza snack, yeah, then the ingredients should be that of pizza. And if yeah. they are a substitute, if they are substitute ingredients, then I think her case holds water. Yo, have you have you ever eaten Domino's or Little Caesars or Pizza Hut? Yes, any of those things. Of course, okay. I have. I, I'm I'm going to break some news to you. Those you. that sauce. Is sometimes in powder form. So okay, that is news to me. Yeah. So yeah, usually let's, let's take it down a notch, but it's it's fucking pizza, okay? Um, so yeah, let's let's calm it down. These are pizza snacks, all right? They got cheese, sausage, and pepperoni on them. Back of the bitch says hey, bagel Alan, halves. May I ask, is there any xanthan gum in there? Uh, <laughs> there might be. I don't know. I've made it down to the. Yeah. I'm at thiamine mononitrate. <laughs> riboflavin uh can't forget about those things but topping cheese blend part skim mozzarella cheese cultured part skim milk salt and enzymes i mean last time i checked that's basically how you make cheese is fucking milk salt and enzymes 
You could do it naturally or you could do it in a factory. Pretty basic. There's some tomato shit in here too. So I think that covers the tomato shit. Oh, <laughs> tomato shit. Wow. That's <laughs> so I'm thinking we're covering all of our, <laughs> oh, sorry, sauce, water, tomato paste, invert cane syrup. So some kind of sugar, modified food starch. That's just starch, salt. I don't know what methyl cellulose is. Some kind of fucking plant Men- stuff. Menthol. Cellulose is in it. Menthol, menthol shit, <laughs> citric acid. I mean, citric acid is in tomatoes <laughs> because they're. Yeah. That's how that works. So, you know, yeah, they're adding shit in it. But like I said, if we've all eaten Domino's or Little Caesars or even I think somebody brought up eating food from 7-Eleven earlier today. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that all of us have had a slice of pizza from fucking 7-Eleven. That shit is as pizza as this motherfucking pizza bagel. That's all I'm OK. Saying. All right. I formulated a new argument and this is going to combat your Domino's and your Pizza Hut. Because it's called Domino's Pizza. Okay, hold on. on. Domino's is claiming this is our version of pizza. Pizza Hut Pizza saying this is our version of pizza. Little Caesars Pizza. This is Little Caesars version of pizza. Bagel Bites is saying that this is a pizza snack. Therefore, they're not saying this is Bagel Bites Pizza. They're saying this is Bagel Bites, a pizza snack. Therefore, the ingredients should be pizza ingredients. I'll take care of that for you. This is Orida's version of a pizza. <laughs> ah. There you go. You're done. Your uh, your own argument, sir. You're welcome. It's not called no 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 no. It's not called Orida pizza. <laughs> it says Orida bagel bites pizza snacks. And yeah. that reads to me as a Domino's large cheese pizza. And it has menthol in it. Wes <laughs> sounds about the same. Thing. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Wes, this is why you should be on this woman's <laughs> side cuz I, I know you like shitty snack foods more than any if this woman wins that means you get a superior bagel bite pizza snack it doesn't need to be superior it's for children yeah i don't i don't we only because no one that. else will eat it no I, one else will you, eat it that's why you give you said i will fucking eat a bag if you put bagel bites in a motherfucking oven and give them to me right now i will eat them yeah i just, I, I don't buy bagel so. bites out of uh the thought of superiority i buy them just out of like uh, convenience nope. microwave them for you know 30 to 45 seconds a pop or if I have more you know a minute and a half and I can chuck them in my mouth yeah. burn the top of my uh, the roof of my mouth for you know four or five days I can tell you exactly how it happens when I have uh, bagel bites I'm like man you know what I could really go for right now a pizza snack not really a whole pizza <laughs> but a pizza snack so w- man I bet you there's a product for that or I just got us covered They've got a, a small half bagel with tomato esque and some cheese on it. Sounds like pizza to me. Um, something that's got a pizza pe- in it too. <laughs> a pizza is a snack. One slice of pizza, that's a snack. Okay. A whole pizza, I wouldn't even qualify that as a meal. I'd say that's just too much of a snack. That's fair. So if, if I'm catching you correctly here, Mur, what you're saying is that bagel bites are pizza. Thank you. All right. On to the next topic, which I don't know what it is, but Wes, take it away. We're going to take a break. <laughs> what if I'm to be back after, after this brief snack break?
things from the hind quarters to the French quarters. Uh, so turns is, turns out uh, in the nor in the streets of New Orleans, French quarters. Uh, I've never been there. Have you guys? Negative. I have uh, I, on my cross country adventure. I ended up driving into New Orleans, and there was a commercial on for Mardi Gras. And I was like, "Oh shit, it's Mardi Gras." Maybe I should try to find a hotel. And so I went to Mardi Gras by myself. In retrospect, a very dangerous decision to make. But it was a fun time. I made nice. friends with strangers. And I talked shit to I talked shit to um Marshall Falk. I saw I him at a bar. You telling me that. Yeah, yeah. He was in town for the uh for the whole celebration. Yeah, because he was there. I think he was uh no, he was there to play in the Super Bowl. Because <laughs> it was when the Patriots were playing. It was the greatest show on turf. It was uh, it was when the, yeah, it was like the the, the longest yard Super Bowl. Kurt Warner, uh, uh, Isaac Bruce, Tory Holt, Ricky Prohl. Ricky Prohl, what a name. Cedra. Uh, yeah. So okay, so a New Orleans uh, street performer who wears Chewbacca costumes uh, is one in connection with the stabbing of the French Quarter. Uh, uh, Saturday, April 24th, according to police, just before 9 p.m., the street performer, known only to officers as someone who wears Star Wars character costumes, uh, was involved in an argument with someone else, probably likely a stormtrooper, <laughs> uh, uh, that ended up in the person being stabbed in the 700 block of uh, Toulouse Street. Uh, police did not, did not release the uh, condition of the victim. Uh, police said that witnesses of the crime told them the costumes head came off during the fight and appeared to be dark skinned man in his twenties. All right. Uh, so yeah, Chew Chewy stabbing people with lightsabers. First of all, that's a crime if that's what happened. Okay. Cause Chewy, Chewy, Chewy's not a, not a Jedi. He can only use knives or brandishing. I'm, I'm actually making light of a very serious situation. I shouldn't be doing that. No, I, I'm well, I'm before we get into this, I'm, I got to, because me and your brother got in an argument about this because in one of the movies, uh, what's that, uh, that that bodega guy or whatever that guy's name is, uh, Finn. Oh, oh, I got you. I got you. He fires up a lightsaber and, and Dewey and I got into an argument. He's like, you couldn't even use the lightsaber because you're not Jedi. Like, it's just a fucking weapon. Yeah. Like, you and your brother apparently have this thing where, like, you can't use a lightsaber because you're not a Jedi. It just means you're not fucking trained how to use it. It's like a samurai. You could put a samurai sword in my hand. I'm just not going to be very proficient with it. Yep. Doesn't mean I can't fucking turn it on. No, I'd agree. Yeah, with but that. Finn in that movie was was like more than proficient with it. He was using it against a stormtrooper who can't hit the fucking broadside of a fucking starship with a fucking yeah. laser blaster. Stor yeah. Stormtroopers are buffoons, and I understand. Yeah, fair. I enough. think the only real discernible uh, lightsaber skill that one learns through being a Jedi is uh, catching those little lasers that come out of the floaty ball uh, during the training. Oh. Well, I was yeah. just going to say well, lasers. Well, well yeah, on. lasers in general, but stormtroopers miss 99% of the time. So you're not, you don't get a lot of practice in the field uh, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. So, uh, oh, here. So uh, I have a lead though for the new Orleans PD. Oh, I'm, here we go. I'm sure the chief of new Orleans PD is listening. Um, Judging by the manner of attack, you're looking for a Latino gentleman. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> wow. Why he stab stab him in the rib cage? We're a blade, we're a blade wielding folk, is all I'm saying. Oh, it's fair. Yeah. We like blades. They're primitive. <laughs> <laughs> you said it finally, not me. All right. Well, hey, man, okay. I can do that. Um, I do have a problem with the uh, the dressed up people that aren't vetted and don't have permits because dressing up like lovable characters from our childhood, it, it lulls you in with a like a, a false sense of security. Like, oh, there's Chewbacca. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're getting fucking just just shanked on a yeah. corner. Well, they like, said it was, a, it was a dispute. I mean, you know. Yeah, but a dispute doesn't need to end in the shanking. <laughs> no, yeah, this is where this is in we're inside of prison walls. Shankings, <laughs> but it also did, up. didn't mean uh, that uh, they felt uncomfortable because Joey was like, as Murr put it, come in here. I'm kind of with Murr on this one though. Like, 
there was a there was a Darth Vader shredding on like a Fender guitar outside of the Houses of Parliament in London, and it made me feel weird. Like I didn't, I wasn't comfortable with it. I was like, look at this is fucking strange, man. This this seems, feels like the wrong corner, but you know, got to make money, I guess. But the dispute, I'm going to assume, I'm just going to project this onto it. I'm assuming the dispute was probably over a picture was taken and the tip wasn't given. And then you're getting shanked over it. Mm, yeah, yeah, yep, that'll happen. Because who's not going to take a picture with Chewbacca, right? You see Chewbacca on the street corner, you're taking a picture. Why the fuck not? And then all of a sudden you got to fucking get sliced up. That ain't right. Maybe they thought Chewie's uh, costume wasn't uh, authentic. You know, maybe he was missing like uh, one of those little. Or maybe, maybe he didn't get tipped. Up because Chewbacca didn't accept cash because of COVID and the person who was going to tip him is clearly a COVID denier and then she, they got into it. Mm-hmm. Well, you should know that uh, Wookiees are actually immune from the COVID virus in the first I, fucking place. I, I so I that's just that. fucking bullshit anyway. Hey, I was just uh, a hypothesis, man. Like I said, Latino guy, most likely. That's all I'm saying. Right. And it was in, in the uh, the phylum <clears throat> section. Latino is most closest to Wookie, closer <laughs> than we are. <laughs> yes, we have uh, glorious manes of hair, uh, <laughs> so you can, say, you can see how that works. <laughs> Chewy. Well, I hope they catch the bastard. And then, what, what do you think they're gonna do? Does he uh, then get transferred to the Galactic Senate? For, uh, for I was gonna say, what is what is he like he this is his gig right like they know him as a fucking street performer so what does he like come back like two weeks later and he just ditches star wars altogether is he like come back as, as like fucking star trek characters and the people are like you that's that's you right you didn't go that far we got gotcha. you lord of the Rings. <laughs> let's let's go raul yeah <laughs> we got we got gotcha. you <laughs> I think maybe 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 he has his friend uh, poses Chewbacca and he just uh, hides in an R two thing, just like parades around. You could that could work. Yeah, sets him, sets his buddy up. You know, blackmails him. It's fucked up. It's all scot free. All right, Andrew. I think you know what time it is. That's right, my friends. It's officially time for your five fun facts for Friday. Being brought to you by the Shin Splints Recovery Group. You can find them online on Facebook. I'm not going to hate on them any more than they deserve, but <laughs> fuck that group. Fuck them right in their stupid fake pussies. Fuck them right in their fleshlights. Fuck, <laughs> fuck all of their shin reconstructions and their compression stockings. We don't yes, care. The Shin Splints Recovery Group is a group that is growing exponentially day by day. So if you're a pussy with pain below the knee and above the ankle, find the Shin Splints Recovery Group online on Facebook. Let's get to it. It's five fun facts for you fuckers right now for your Friday. Starting with this. Did you know the average person falls in love twice? Men and women both report falling in love head over heels only twice in their lifetime and one out of seven feel that they settled for their current partner because true love quote slipped through their fingers and uh happy mother's day by the way everyone (laughs) it's dark god it was like kind of like light and happy and then it got dark yeah (laughs) two times okay like oh love love twice love that's nice you know that makes sense and then then, then the settling part. <laughs> but most people who do experience it twice fucked up the first time, so they're just dealing with it now. <laughs> I, I really did think of the Mother's Day thing because then that would mean that the mother of your children is the woman you settled for. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, honey. <laughs> we 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 can't feel all that bad. I, I totally deleted her out of my phone. She, I don't talk to her ever, <laughs> <laughs> but I still think about her. <laughs> We're still friends on Facebook. <laughs> that is a problem, isn't it? In the current, the modern era, is that the the whole Facebook friends thing? Yeah, probably. I don't know. It depends on if your 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 personal lady is a lunatic or not. I mean, more so than you know your average lady. Yeah, but if you're liking up uh, all sorts of pictures and things. Oh and- yeah, if you're like getting on that page and doing some doing some diving, then yeah, that's probably that's problematic. Yeah. I would say 100%. Yeah. you could just be there. Like they could just, it could just be there in the background. 
but like I, right. you, you, you definitely can't be. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's certainly a, a difference in what you talked about about being regretful and like uh, settling and then skeeving on social media. Yeah, being like, hey, <laughs> it's a <laughs> different, different, different realm there, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> pushing it. You be, you best moving on. You best, like, you, best. you best jerk off in the morning thinking about her. Don't tell anybody. Hey, hey long time no see. How's your marriage? Oh, all right, cool. Mine's good too. <laughs> it's, it's a little weird. You want a bagel bite? Pizza snacks, goddammit. <laughs> Did you know that Victor Lustig? was such a good con artist he sold the eiffel tower he convinced scrap metal dealers that the tower was too expensive for the city to maintain and sold it for seventy thousand dollars he later sold it again but the buyer reported him to the police uh he's now famously known as the man who sold the eiffel tower twice shit he couldn't he couldn't he couldn't leave well enough alone he would have gotten away with it for the first time selling it for 70 grand in the late 1800s and then tried tried to dip back into the well again yeah but he did and he worked not hey, once you said he got twice he got caught but again like you said it's like the late 1800s there ain't a whole lot of paperwork <laughs> there ain't a whole lot of sharing of information so yeah. like uh and i've heard this story before actually what ended up happening was is he convinced one scrap metal company that they yeah, the city can't maintain it so they're getting rid of it um Seventy thousand dollars. The contract's yours, and then they buy the contract for seventy thousand dollars. And the city's like, "The fuck are you doing with all that? No, you can't knock down the Eiffel Tower. What the fuck are you doing?" And then he gets away with it, and then he just contacts another scrap metal company. Yeah, hey, seventy grand. You can have all the metal. <laughs> I don't know if he ever got caught and convicted, and I don't feel like looking it up. Do you think he said like <laughs> like that, like Mario? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, uh, to answer your question, he fled to the United States. Nice. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, also, my man used to run another scam where he sold people a box that he told them printed money. Oh, man. Yeah. He's fucking good. This guy's good. Apparently, it was, it was a huge trunk because, you know, it was like whatever, the 1930s or whenever this was. Uh, yeah, 1920s. And it had like a fake a fake arrangement of levers uh, that you had to operate. And so he basically he convinced people to like give him a denomination of money. He'd chuck it in the box with this paper that was would print the money. And then he would like wait a little while and then pull out the a bill that he already had stashed in there and, and took it to the bank, authenticated it and then charged people a fucking bajillion dollars for the trunk. Same dude. Same dude. Jesus. Yeah. What I was going to say was it. uh <clears throat> One, this reminded me of uh, the guy who uh, laid claim to the moon and was selling torch. Do you remember that guy? Yeah, that wasn't too long ago, was it? No, probably. Well, Tom Green had him on. That's how I knew about him. And he uh, he laid claim to like portions of the moon and was selling selling like acres of acres of land of the moon to to celebrities, and then became a millionaire because of it. And then it was some sort of like. I don't even remember how how he worded it. It was bullshit. Check this shit out. All right, but I, I I got something else good about the Eiffel Tower. But go ahead, Alan. You go. Right, yeah, check this shit out because I just I read it and it's mad interesting. So you were asking if he got arrested. He fled to the U.S. He did this in the U.S. Uh, and then one of his most this is the last line of this portion. One of Lustig's most fa- infamous uses of the device was upon a Texas sheriff who he convinced to buy it for thousands of dollars upon realizing he had been tricked the sheriff pursued lustig to chicago upon meeting him again the sheriff was conned into believing that he was not operating the device correctly and was handed a large sum of cash as compensation unaware that the money was counterfeit the counterfeiting would eventually lead to lustig's arrest by american law enforcement officers (laughs) this guy's fucking legend bro this is a good dude this is a good did you know I love couldn't, it. Couldn't leave well enough alone. Well, this is what I was going to share, share with you guys. So have you guys ever seen a footage of the guy who uh, attempted to fly off the Eiffel Tower? No. I don't know did if he, I've seen did he footage. Die? I've, <laughs> I, he did say attempt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming. <laughs> you guys see this? Nope. Okay, oh. Let's watch it. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. So he's got this thing. This is like a giant uh, 1912 parachute. 
Okay. Here, well, sh- here, highlight the highlight the head. So because I can see it, but it's like yeah, right there. There you go. Yeah. So what I want you to like, this is probably um, not not the top of the Eiffel Tower. It's probably like the uh, the second or one of the one of the bases up. It's probably like forty stories or so. But that doesn't seem high enough. Uh, the thing of it is, is that I like you like. He the way he looks down, he kind of starts th- getting second guessed. Like, I don't know. Oh, uh, maybe this ain't a good idea. Oh, well, all right, fuck it, I'm doing it. And then, oh man, he's oh he's got that. Yeah, he's got that. He's I know that lean and that oh, rock because yeah. you guys you guys just watched it like a week or two ago. <laughs> and um, so he, but this is this is his experiment. He had the Paris Press. And a lot of other uh, uh, publications come out, and he takes a jump, and oh fuck, yeah. and that's it. Oh, <laughs> and home, homeboy died. Not laughing, but you know, homeboy, homeboy died. Man, dude, old times were fucking wild. <laughs> like <laughs> shit was crazy, bro. <laughs> just trying shit out we're fucking putting cocaine in medicine like oh man good times <laughs> well could, i'd like I to can, say if i can fly off of this i will be rich and i will get laid as much as humanly possible my point is it's like the 20s or whenever it is he was like so tell you what we're gonna haul up this 300 pounds of burlap and i'm gonna jump off and it's gonna catch me <laughs> it's gonna work i tested this off the uh off the roof of my back porch. All right, now I need six guys to help me get it up there. <laughs> I made this cape out of lead because it's uh, very durable, but it's flexible. I figured it won't tear. <laughs> I dissected a bird. I figured out what's in their wings. <laughs> oh, God. There's, yeah. by the way, there's hundred like before the Wright brothers, there's like hundreds of stories of, of guys like that. But as far as the Eiffel Tower guy, uh, uh, Lustig goes, I'd like to say that people were just dumber back then. They had a lot less information. So there wasn't like, there wasn't a lot of, um, like right now there's a lot of internet scams, but everybody knows about them because the internet, you can share the information. But there's lots of internet scams because people still fall for them. If you get a call from an Indian gentleman claiming to be from Apple or Amazon or just I, the one I love the most is like, hi, this is your credit card provider from MasterCard, Visa, and American Express. Oh, yeah, three different companies being represented by the same telemarketer at the same time. Magical. But people still fall for them. So idiots have existed for ages. Oof. Moving on. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Did you know the deep sea is 103 million square miles in area, which is larger than all the land on Earth? Actually, that doesn't seem unreasonable. So, yeah, I, it's pretty shitty to, to, to know. But it does make you wonder um, why we do concentrate. Why haven't we concentrated more on under the sea than than we have if we've got so much more area under there why haven't we tried like we seem to want to go to space where like you can't live in the vacuum any which way yeah obviously right now can't live under the water but it's right here you don't got to strap yourself to a fucking 40-story building full of fucking volatile rocket fuel and try to blast yourself anywhere why haven't we tried to do that more are you asking why haven't we explored there more not explored there attempted to create some sort of livable space there Mm. like we're worried about the rising sea levels so like arizona like at one point in time it's like oh it's too fucking hot we can't live there then we invented air conditioning and now like phoenix is like the highest like the fastest growing city in the the, in the world and they're in the country so well you can't breathe on there why haven't we tried to invent something to do so? So you you want to uh, you want to invent some sort of sea lab situation where it's like bubbles and uh... <laughs> not this is I love how you always turn this. On. So you want to? No, I'm not saying I want to. I'm just saying why haven't we like explored the ability to? 
Kind if of, it's right here, we don't have to go that's intergalactic. The last, that's the last ditch effort. Here we, I mean, we haven't, ex, I mean, we'll, we'll send people to Alaska and the far reaches of, uh, of Canada before we need to like build some sort of fucking abyss down in, uh, down, down in the depths of sea. What do you, I mean, I guess you have power, you can do hydro and then you can convert the, the, the water into oxygen. So, uh, assuming you have like the power resource to do that, but I don't know. It's it's gonna cost mul multi millions of dollars. I don't know. Just stop fucking. Stop producing kids. <laughs> <laughs> I look back a little bit. Pull out. <laughs> Pull out the fucking lamb lambskins. Uh, no, fucking. I don't know why we have we, the the water's fucking dangerous, bro. We don't want no parts of down there. We'd rather deal with space. Like. I don't. I personally am terrified of the ocean, so you're. I, I've got no good answer for you. We should check it out, probably, but we don't want to know it. Godzilla's down there. That shit's not fake. Yeah, like we don't know. I mean, you guys, you you guys assume there's fucking like nine foot fucking whoa uh, mammal dwellers was, cruising around uh, the northern northern uh, north. Don't start. Uh, don't you can, start. You can take that tone right back to the tone store, sir. <laughs> I don't appreciate it. I'm okay. Sorry. I'll take that back to the tone store, and I'll eat a fucking. Uh, bagel break or whatever bagel uh, pizza snack shut up uh yeah i mean but if you guys assume those mammals are roman earth obviously there's no telling what you guys think uh, lays down a couple of miles below the surface of the uh of the ocean have you seen I'm, a giant okay. squid it's a fucking alien i'm not saying we have to go into like the deepest depths of the ocean but i'm talking like miami right like go like I don't know, a few hundred yards off the shore before the shelf falls off, like, and have maybe a little, like, some portholes poking up out the top. Like, why not extend that landmass with something a little more, like, right. you know, uh, artificial? Well, then you could, because then you would have to, uh, you'd have to make a remix of Will Smith's Miami. You know, it wouldn't oh, just be about the city, it would be about the underground hoopla that's going on. <laughs> like, <laughs> why can't we just... Like, didn't they like make islands over in fucking Dubai? Like, oh, yeah, just, the yeah world. Let's, let's just do that stuff. Let's just yeah. find well, more more dirt and yeah, let's just in the fuck, water. Let's just then. fuck up coastal uh, coastal wave breaks, you yeah. know, and then have to then have to spend billions to uh, to fuck with that. Let's just do that. Well, apparently we're fucking up the air, which is fucking up the coast. So why not just fuck up the coast and not yeah. worry about the air? Aren't we at like almost at like event horizon? Isn't that the name for like when fucking shit goes down? Like I don't know. Aren't we That's at like goes... the tipping point or whatever the fuck it is? Yeah, like, well, well, Cypress Hill wrote a song about that. Oh, right. good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear that one. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now all I've got is welcome to the city where the heat is on all night on the streets to the break of dawn. I don't know a single DMX song, but I can almost quote that whole fucking thing. Bienvenidos a Miami. Yeah, I was thinking about when the shit goes down. You better be ready when the shit goes down. This guy, he would pull out a fucking Cypress Hill cut. <laughs> I like it. All right, what you got, Mur? Did you know you enjoy tickling more when you're young? Mm -mm. For reasons unknown, the fun of tickling starts to trail off around the age of 40. <laughs> Just seems like the most Ridic like ridiculous fun fact of all time. I I, I don't know. Uh, maybe the horrors of life uh, that are pressing upon you when you reach the age of forty uh, take the fun out of someone uh, wiggling their digits upon your rib cage. I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like you're necessarily in the mindset for innocuous giggling when you start to get to adulthood. Yeah, I don't think tickling forty year old men. 40 plus year old men is really an activity that should be happening. I mean, unless they ask for it. I mean, that's fine. Uh, most likely pay for it, I would assume. Uh, <laughs> but, but I look also the wrong guy here because I do not fucking like to be, I can't stand it. My wife fucking thinks it's hilarious. I will thrash about like a fucking a terrible two-year-old if you fucking try to tickle I, I do not fuck i do not fuck around i will chop you in the throat but do you still respond to the sensation yeah i can still feel it yes and i do do not like it 
<laughs> I don't, I don't like, like being tickled. <laughs> At all, and that, that's that was years now. That's I don't know about my childhood years. I don't recall being like tickling's great, because uh, like it always, it's like one of the few activities where you could force a person to piss themselves. I'm not yeah. into that. Like, no, I'm not. I don't like it at all. <laughs> well, for a certain price. <laughs> well, I, I I find it funny that you say uh, it's something that's like uh, enjoyed enjoyed in your youth or adolescence, and then. And then you say, like, by the age of 40, it's gone. I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, I is that what you said? Kind of. Yeah. And and, and there's no scientific explanation for it, which right. again fascinates because tickling is something that's as old as time itself or sure, as humankind I, itself. But I guess it's like it's it's found in adolescence. And then by the time I I'm 38 and i I think of myself as old. And I'm saying like I sitting here like oh tickling, I got, I got a year and a half more of tickles in me. Oh boy, can't wait! <laughs> and, and all the joy just <laughs> fucking we'll be, drains we'll out. Of me. I, don't, I don't necessarily. That seems weird to me. <laughs> like uh, Sarah's gonna tickle you, and you just frown. Yeah, it's well, I'm I'm it. I am robbed of joy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but. When I read that one the other day, like I, my, my kid, he's six, my kid's six years old. And like, I'll, I'll come up behind him and I'll just like, ah, get him by the rib cage and he'll start giggling. And then he'll turn around and be like, he'll put his arms above his head and like, do it again. And, and I'm just like, no, because like Alan said, you're going to piss yourself. And then I got to, I got to get you a new pair of underwear and all this stuff. Nah, nah. Right. But he, he loves it. And, and it's because it's an involuntary reaction. Extra fun fact. Um, you can't tickle yourself. Because right. the reason the reason you laugh is because it's like it's stranger fingers uh, creating a sensation that you can't create for yourself. Yeah. This is why you have to uh, sit on your hand and jerk off. <laughs> Wait a minute. Weird. This is a, isn't that a stranger? Is that called, <laughs> is that called a stranger? Did you get one of those at the depot, Mer? Call it a I know. I just love how you didn't really say that you, you wait for your hand to fall asleep. You just sit on your hand and jerk off. <laughs> get her up very nice and deep. Just just like this. Just sit on that hand. <laughs> <laughs> and, and finally, did you know early American humans used to hunt giant armadillos and live inside their shells? Hmm. I don't think that's Glip Glyptodons were large armored mammals that grew to the size of Volkswagen beetles, and natives took shelter inside of their gigantic shells. Wow. Look at you. Fuck. So, so armadillos were the size of Volkswagens? Yes. Jesus. Well, hell yeah. You fucking you light those puppies up with bow and arrows and whatever the hell you can and then uh, extract that fucking armor. Hell yeah. I don't. That, that that no did did I know that armadillos were once the size of VWs? No, I don't. But who to those folks? That takes some balls, dude. We are lucky to be alive because there was um I was I was reading this book about um early man and apparently wombats, which are like weird looking bear creatures like that are native to Australia, at one time were twenty feet tall before fucking man went in there and started fucking like pillaging those fucking beasts. Mm -hmm. So like the things that we're used to were like three to 10 times bigger than what we're normal. Like we understand them to be because we've tamed them motherfuckers because we, we are the alpha predator. Can you and imagine, I, can you imagine a wombat coming like cruising through like the sides of something like Carzilla? <laughs> in a fucking, I don't, <laughs> just like <laughs> plowing through fucking humans, like like. like. I, I don't think I think wombats are uh, are vegetarian, but yeah, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see where you're going. I see, I see where you're going with this. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, no, and uh, I don't know. The only thing I will say is that Murrah says thinks we tamed. Did you say we tamed them? I don't think we tamed them. I don't I think, think we tamed we them, was, but we. We killed we the scary off. ones and we let the little ones procreate. And that's how genetics works. Like, we're yes. like, little ones, fine. Le small wombats, okay. Right. 
car sized wombat's bad. You kill you kill a you kill a car sized wombat and you have uh, a month's worth of uh a thigh meat. Do you think that the humans that hunted the glyphodons or whatever you fucking clip glyptodons or whatever the fuck you call I'm it. sure I didn't pronounce it properly. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have it in front of me. Uh do you think that the humans that hunted them for their shell houses ultimately died of exposure because they killed all the big ones for shell houses and only got small ones? Hmm. N- n- I-, I don't know how to answer that stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is one of the, this is one of those questions that you see on uh, that 70s show in the in the circle yeah yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? oh, man but i also learned recently that armadillos apparently are bulletproof because uh and this was discovered because a man in texas tried to shoot an armadillo and the bullet ricocheted back and hit him in the face wow. good you dumb fuck good Hmm. I bet you couldn't take 50 cal. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why you don't fuck with nature. And that is your fun fact Friday. Brought to you by the Shin Splints Recovery Group. All right. Uh, Alan, I'm not going to play the goddamn uh, space laser. <laughs> I forgot yeah. about it. <laughs> That'd be so good. Uh, well, damn it. All right. I'll tell you what, you give us the uh, hint on the uh, Marjorie uh, MJG versus AOC <laughs> acronyms versus acronyms. Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, so it's a, it's a brewing Q, Q story. What do we call it? The fucking Q, Q report? Yeah, yeah, that's what it got. It's been a little while. Uh, the Q report has been quiet, but I will tell you, the Q report is brewing again because, yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene, as you said, uh, has thrown down the gauntlet and i think she wants to debate aoc uh on the house floor about the green new deal which i'm not really sure why um it sounds like a it sounds like a dumb idea from kind of both parts i don't want to hear either one of these bitches ramble. It, it sounds like the republicans want it to pass is what it sounds like right um so yeah so i you know whenever mtg gets around to to reading it um i'm sure they'll probably talk about it and it really won't be that exhilarating. Um, but I, honestly, I mean, I, that, that's a thing that may or may not happen. I really want to talk about vaccine vapors and fucking infertility. <laughs> We're going to get there, too. Uh, so, guys, if you you or your significant other is pregnant, just remember, vaccine vaccinated people will not cause you to miscarriage. But some people might think that. We'll talk about it later. The more you know. The more you know. Yeah. It's fucking rainbow. <laughs> Across the screen. Shooting star. So yeah, that's that's our Q our Q sneak peek. We'll get to those in the next uh coming oh, weeks. If these two uh if these two people uh end up going head to head, how do how do the middle class holes inject? How do we how do we say, hey, look, we, we want front row seats, we want we want access. We want Alan Giannis front and center to be like, oh, um, excuse me, ma'am. Um, hey, which one of y'all broads is going to uh, bite each other's nipples or something? I'm, like gonna, that? I'm definitely yeah. calling them broads. Uh, no, I mean, I say we go on a campaign. I think social media is our best bet. Uh-oh. AOC is all over it. Um, I think MTG is all over it. Kind of maybe not. I don't know. Probably she got there. She got cut off. Yeah. Yeah. One of them. No, I, we, we need to stop this. We need to stop this from happening. You don't want it to happen? Because, no, because, look, this democracy is very fragile. It is. Okay? And if these two fucking vapid morons try to speak intelligently about a subject, the entire American populace is going to realize how fucking dim-witted and stupid our elected politicians are. And the whole system will collapse around us. We need to stop this. Yeah. I would love it for entertainment value, but for the sake of humanity, it needs to stop before <laughs> it starts. I mean, shouldn't it just be like a fucking like mud wrestling match or something? I'm not saying that to be like sexist or anything. I just think them talking about whatever's in the Green New Deal, because I believe me, I haven't read it. Uh, a fucking it's it's less entertaining than them two just fucking throwing punches at each other. Like just fuck it. Just go for it. 
let's let's get really 1800s with Congress again. Right. Let's let people bring in fucking canes and beat people to death and ten step ten ten step paces with a fucking revolver. Yeah, house floor. Yeah, house floor, baby. Let's do it. I'm down with that. An an yeah. un like an unboard <laughs> fucking uh yeah pistol with yeah. black powder. You know, I mean, it might just lodge in your fucking rib cage. It may not kill you. Yeah, it'll maim you. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like the Smithsonian fucking walks over, like a fucking just a fucking single pistol, like single shot pistol, just shoots a fucking ball. Yeah, at you. Something that something that one is not uh, <clears throat> not extremely accurate for someone who is nope. even a good shot, and two, when put in the hands of people who aren't particularly good shots. God yeah. knows it's gonna happen. My yeah. a reporter. Like I'm talking, I'm talking like this thing is not rifled. It's just a fucking metal tube with a ball in it. <laughs> That's it. It just whatever happens, happens. Yeah. It might give someone a shin splint. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a recovery it'll, group for that. <laughs> it'll blow through a femur. Just fucking it's it. It's over. <laughs> Fight's over, guys. Ah, <laughs> uh, Christ! Uh, All right, yeah. Where, 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 where are we at on on the, on the draft? God damn it! I wanted to see where we were. Oh shit! I didn't. Uh, we lost track. We were talking. Has Aaron, has Aaron we were talking about been, such good stuff? If Aaron Rodgers has been traded. Is Tim Tebow on a goddamn team now? I know Murr's like no. Him. He's, oh, he's yeah. we took Rashad Bateman from Minnesota with the twenty seventh pick. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I don't mind that. And then we will be on the clock here shortly with the 31st. Murr is like Tim Tebow. God damn it. He needs to be a, a shaman and a goddamn quarterback. For oh, dude, when you were fucking dealing with your internet issues, my man was over here just preaching. And I was like, just call him Jesus already. God damn it. Leave it. Uh... Jesus Tebow. Hey, he joins the Jaguars with Trevor Lawrence. Florida fully open. You're talking about sold out stadiums. They earn enough money to go out and get a high priced free agent. They fix that fucking team and Super Bowl bound all they, because of Timmy Tebow. They fix that team and then they move it to Wembley. Right. <laughs> <laughs> People like you that ruin Wembley Stadium every year. I'm gonna actually rec- I'm gonna keep this on retainer, Murr, because in five years from now, if it doesn't come to fruition, I'm I'm going to play this. When you're getting a fucking halftime meat pie yeah. in fucking London, we'll be like, see Murr, this is a good yeah. call. <laughs> <laughs> Tebow and Lawrence, here we come. <laughs> All right, folks. Good night. <laughs>